Dig Dug Digging Strike is, I guess, Namco's way of saying, hey, we haven't forgotten about this guy. Countless games have attempted to reinvent their series with new ideas, and these are usually quite successful. But we often don't hear about the lesser successful ones like Yoshi Topsy Turvy, Pack and Roll, Sinistar Unleashed, Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll, Soldier of Fortune Payback, and the list goes on. Dig Dug Digging Strike pretty much falls in that category. It tried something new that, while didn't exactly scare fans off, pretty much left it in limbo without any noteworthy press coverage or fanfare. A lot of fans have at this point probably forgotten it even exists. I've reviewed games in the past that experienced a similar fate like Yoshi Topsy Turvy, which is actually not that bad. That's one of the reasons I like to go back and look at these forgotten games. Sometimes you'll come across something awesome. However, I played this game on the DS back when it was released. I always loved the arcade game, so I had to give this one a look. This game is not fresh to me, but I've gone into it as if it was for the review. Enough rambling. Is it good? Well, let's get right into it then. The game starts off with Taizo, because that's Dig Dug Dude's name now, I guess, who is talking about his son Susumu being requested for work. However, Mr. Taizo feels left out as nobody calls on him anymore. One more call is it, and he heads straight for the mission himself without a peep from Susumu. Later on, Susumu, who as you know him is Mr. Driller, tries to find his dad. Not long long after he finds that Taizo has gone forth with one of his missions, then tags along to help in the form of mini-games you can play throughout the stages to bring an advantage to the current game. There's really nothing of value in the story here, but the game insists on filling you in with unskippable cutscenes. There are also many unskippable tutorials at the start of the game which will tell you how the basic formula works. Essentially, it reintroduces you to Dig Dug, but beyond that, it's almost entirely up to you. There are new level hazards, new power-ups, new monsters, and yet the 10 minute long tutorial succeeds only in telling you what you probably already know, or is very easy to figure out on its own. Hmm, there's a rock here. Well, I've seen rocks in Dig Dug before, so this should be no problem. Oh wait, it slides to the side you dug from. That's entirely new. I don't mind a single death as a learning experience, but when you have such a long, mostly pointless tutorial at the start, it makes me question why this hadn't been mentioned. This game has the logic of, allow me to tell you a thing or two, but not how to break these very essential bricks in the way of a stake. Oh, by the way, you can't do it on your own. You have to either break them with your stake or lead a dragon type to it. That's probably why ghost dragons exist after a period of time, otherwise you might have no way of breaking these, which would softlock the game. These are the stakes. They're deployed on various islands where giant monsters have taken over. It's up to you to dig a hole underneath the stakes to have them drill to the ground, separating the island once the corresponding stakes have been synchronized in form with the island. Hopefully you've timed it up just right so that a part of the island will fall, right as a giant monster is laid victim to your trap. You can keep track of this on the top of the screen where the game is viewed similarly to the classic sequel of Dig Dug. The bottom of the screen plays like Dig Dug usually would, although the very simple formula has added many more gimmicks to give it a unique feel. In addition, the monsters are no longer actual enemies, instead they've simply become hazards of sorts. Nine times out of ten, the monsters just mind their own business and only become a problem if you've opened a path to them. They rarely even ghost to other paths like they would in the original, which if you took away from the original would render it far too easy. For the most part, that was the challenge. And the same can almost be said about Dig Dug. Almost indeed, because another issue surfaces with the game's navigation. When you're midway digging through what the game technically renders as a tile space, you're unable to move up or down until you come to the next tile. In fact, holding up or down between one just moves you into the corresponding left or right direction until that tile has been cleared. Adapting this physics rule to a game two decades later? It just doesn't make sense. As you play the game, you'll come across many types of power-ups that would be fruit in the original. You can use these on the fly for the most part, some of which will trigger Mr. Driller to perform an action on the surface. This can be from flying the Xevious ship, deploying bombs on the target to slow it down, and even a Rally X car to get rid of some of the surface enemies. These are all based on a time limit, keeping it fair and balanced. There are other variations on this as well, like a giant screwdriver to change the cracking direction of the stake, and a bomb that drills the stake immediately below the surface. These power-ups are pretty innovative and cool, even going out of its way to highlight Namco games of the past. I guess it's a good time to talk about the game's pacing. Immediately I can say that it's very tedious. There are 12 levels in all, each taking between 5 and 30 minutes. Why the gap in time difference? Well, because the game often feels like it's based on chance. The giant monsters have no sort of pattern as it seems on the overworld, as they just seem to stomp around portions of the island without any sort of distinction to make note of. They can also move rather quickly, whereas the stakes usually do not. You can do your best to time it well, but that window of time is very slim, making near misses very common. With that, the cycle just starts all over again until you've run out of stakes to drill whereas you're then told to restart the level as you've run out of chances to sink the giant monster. It doesn't help that the whole overworld versus underground concept is pretty confusing. You'll constantly be changing perspectives based on what angle you're presented with, and confusing feels to be an understatement. Now I will admit there are some entertaining aspects to the game. Seeing a large part of the island fall into the abyss is quite satisfying, especially if it had been right next to you on the 2D screen, where you get to watch all the underground monsters sink with it. That's something special, and it just has me believe that there's a concept here that could have worked, but Dig Dug Digging Strike unfortunately is very 
far off from whatever that could have been. It's far too slow, which is ironic to say for a game that takes less than two hours to complete. Sure, there is minor replayability with collectibles in a two-player versus mode where you both race to collect coins, but neither of these are going to redeem it. There isn't even a version of the original Dig Dug arcade game on here like most other games of this type have done. There's a tutorial towards the start of the game that plays exactly like the original Dig Dug, so why couldn't they have implemented this as a bonus feature? I don't think Dig Dug is a doomed series. I believe the demand for Dig Dug isn't entirely absent, so the series should still have potential in redeeming itself after its long past arcade years. It's a formula with many possibilities, and while Digging Strike may have been somewhat of a step in the right direction, Namco didn't do much more than dipping their toes in the water. Thanks for watching this review, and I hope to see you again in the next one.